Uh, Speak Truth to Power uh, began as a book written by Carrie Kennedy. Carrie spent two years uh, circling the globe, meeting with what she describes as being the most courageous people on earth. Many of these people had endured torture and suffered repression, but their stories which are told here and their photos which are told here are not about that. Their stories are about hope. Their stories are about perseverance. And that's what we try to convey at, the, at Speak Truth to Power. Elie Wiesel, who is featured over there on the wall, I think said it best. He said, what hurts the victim the most is not the silence of the oppressor, but, uh, excuse me, is not, the, how does it go? Is not the silence, is not the cruelty of the oppressor, but the silence of the bystander. And that's what we try to convey here at Speak Truth to Power. We say that in the face of injustice and inequality, you cannot afford to be a bystander. And this is what Dr. Watt, who joins us today, here as well as on the wall over there, has done his entire life. And we thank you for being here. He exemplified what we're trying to convey to people at Speak Truth to Power. So in addition to, to the book, we have our photo exhibit. These photos were taken by Pulitzer Prize winning photographer Eddie, Eddie Adams. We have a play. The book was adapted into a play by Ariel Dorfman called Speak Truth to Power, Voices from Beyond the Dark. And we have our human rights curriculum that's taught all over the world. Right now it's taught in 20 provinces in Cambodia. Over 350,000 students in, in Italy are learning Speak Truth to Power. We have it in the United States and in places like New York and Chicago, and we're hoping to bring it to Maryland as well. So please up, pick up the material on the, on the, on the um, desk over there or talk to me about, about uh, bringing Speak Truth to Power to Maryland. Ultimately, our goal is to get people through the play, through the photo exhibit, through the curriculum, to self-identify as human rights defenders in their personal lives, in their communities, in their schools, and beyond. I think it's a wonderful exhibit that really uh, shows the great people who are around the world fighting for uh, human rights and uh, the wonderful job that they're doing and uh, something you don't hear about in their daily newspapers enough. Excellent exhibit. I'm so glad that we came and I look forward to uh, the Baltimore City School teachers being able to teach this in their curriculum. Uh, I think the students get so much out of this. It's just profound. Exhibit, and hopefully Baltimore City Public Schools will have it in their curriculum because children need to know. Children need to know. It's just excellent. It's excellent. It was a wonderful experience, and I think that we should all of our students in Baltimore City or in Maryland to look at it. Carry me back memories of Robert Kennedy and my first time meeting him, and also it is just beautiful to see such a exhibit. What is um, really special about this evening is um, this airport has been a really critical part of, I think, of my own growing up. When um, many, some of you may remember, this used to be called Friendship Airport. You do remember, and there was not a Dulles airport. So anytime something flew from overseas, they came here. And I, my mother and my brothers and sisters and I spent a lot of time driving to Friendship Airport to pick up my father when he was coming in from his visits in Europe or Vietnam, where Dr. Watt comes from, um, or wherever he was going, South America. So friendship has always been important um, as part of you know the growing up. And then it became Third Grid Marshall Airport important in the idea that somebody stood up here in Maryland and really made tr transformed American history. And today, we can have this great exhibit of human rights activists. Um, I think John spoke so eloquently earlier when he talked about how hard it is to do the right thing. And the best thing you can do when you're trying to do the right thing is have a friend. Because at least you can laugh at them, joke with them, stay up late with them, and work with them. And they can give you courage and help when all around you looks tough and difficult. And what we did with this exhibit, um, and all those who worked with it, uh, Christina Taylor and John and Lynn, at least with the Memorial, is to say, anybody who walks by here, 
They can read these amazing stories. They've got troubles in their own lives. We all do. But they can see what other people have been able to accomplish under tough circumstances. They can see that others are suffering at times pain. And they can ask themselves, as we all can ask ourselves, what more can each of us do? That's what this is all about, to remind us that each day we have a short period of time on Earth and we can fulfill it with good works for others and courage for everyone. Thank you very much.